I've had my Ender 3 V3 SE for a few weeks now. I've been running completely stock with stock material profiles and Creality Print. It's been doing pretty good and giving great results. But now it's time to start dialing in a material profile for the filament I use. This is the process I go through with all of my printers. I run them stock for a few weeks before making any changes whatsoever. I've done this with my Ender 3, my Ender 5, my Ender 5 Plus, and my K1 Max. I'm going to do it for my Ender 3 V3 SE. In this video, I'm going to show you how I start building my base profile and build upon it to dial it in. I'll be using this PLA from Printed Solid to start my profile. The color on this is called Blue Whale Gray. I do like this color. This video is sponsored by my friends at PCBWay. PCBWay does more than printed circuit boards and assemblies. Perhaps you have a project requiring 3D printing, but you don't have a 3D printer. PCBWay can help with that. Simply drag and drop your CAD file onto their easy quote page. Select your preferred material type, the color, and the amount of infill. Click on the submit request and get a lightning fast quote. While you're on their website, check out their six project design contests with categories for both electronic and mechanical projects. Maybe consider entering the project you're working on right now. Professional or hobbyist, PCB Way has you covered. Now, after creating my base profile, I'll do a temperature test to determine what temperature this filament prints best at, and I'll update the new profile for that temperature. All right. I've rambled on long enough about it. Let's do it. I'm Bill, and this is Pushing Plastic. Okay, so when I'm building a profile, the first thing I want to do is set the printer to the one I'm working with. If you have one printer, you'll have one in your list. If you have multiple printers, you'll have multiple printers. I'm working with my Ender 3 V3 SE. So I'm going to select that as my current printer. I'm coming down to Material. I'm going to click the drop-down arrow. And I'm going to come to manage. Now I'm building a profile for a PLA that's not listed. So I'm going to hit generic PLA 1.75. That's the closest match. This is going to be the foundation for our profile. With that selected, I'm going to click on create. I'm going to change the name to a profile that's easily rec recognizable. This is printed solid is the manufacturer, it's PLA, and it's 1.75 millimeters. And that's all there is to that. I'm gonna hit create, and you'll notice over here on the left side at the bottom, it actually added that filament for me. Now, if you wanna make sure you have that selected when you're making your changes too. The only other change I'm gonna make at this point is up here in the filament cost, whatever I paid for the spool. In this case, it was $19.99. Um, if you pay $10, just put $10 in there. When you're slicing, you'll notice there's a cost associated with it when it tells you how long it's going to take to print and so on. That's based off of the filament cost entered here. Down here in the description, I'm going to type in printed solid. Again, that's the manufacturer. Um... They call this Jesse Premium. So I'm going to just have that there. And you can change the color. I usually don't. Um, it doesn't make a difference what the color is. If you ever run into a situation where maybe, say, black prints at a little bit of a different temperature or something than maybe the blue, you can do that. But I typically don't do it. I use one profile for the brand and type. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to select create. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm gonna hit save. We did create it and you wanna come over here and make sure that you set your filament, your material for the filament profile you just created. Now I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna start setting a temperature for this material. I'm going to select calibration from the pull down menu and go right to temperature. 
Up here across the top, you'll see the different types of filaments. There's uh, PETG, ABS. We're working with PLA, so I'll leave that selected. The spool I'm working with says the best printing range is 235 to 200. So I'm going to go ahead and add those numbers in here. And the temperature step, I'll, that's telling us that it's going to start printing at 235, then it's going to go to 230. 225, 220, all the way up until it hits 200. So let's go ahead and hit the OK button. It kicks us right to preview. And it has us at layer one, so I'm going to take this all the way up. And I'll zoom in here, and you can see that each section is marked on the temperature that it will be printing at. And when you're printing this, you know, you can look at your printer once in a while, make sure the temperature is changing. So we're going to be looking for how our overhang works out we're going to look for bridging across the top we're going to look how the floor looks for stringing over here in the open area where the point is and a little bit of the arc overhang so i'm going to go ahead and export this and i'm going to print it out and we'll see how we do All right, so here's the results for our temperature tower. And at a quick glance, you might think, oh, well, they all look the same, but you gotta really break it down. What we're looking at is the area of the overhang right here. We're gonna be looking at the bridging coming across. We're gonna look for stringing in this area here. And I also wanna see how well this arc at the back is printing, including the overhang right there. So let's get to it and break this down. At 235, I'm seeing my bridging is separating. I see it at 230 with a droop. 225 looks pretty good. 220, I can see it drooping some more. Same thing with 215 and so on. The overhangs, they're all looking good from 235, actually up to 200. I'm getting good overhangs on all of those. Um, the stringing... I'm not seeing a lot of stringing at all, but I am seeing real light fuzzies. I'm not sure you can see them or not. 225 seems to have the least amount. And now I'm looking at the rounded edge here. Uh, 230, I'm seeing some break up over in this area and here. A little bit on the outside, not a whole lot. 230 doesn't look too bad. Um, 235, I'm seeing a lot of little nasty artifacts down here at the very bottom. 220, it's going, I'm, it's just looking real bad with this line coming up. I'm seeing that on everything from 220 on up. So I'm looking at 225 seems to be the overall best. It has the best bridging. It has the best looking floor. Its overhang is just as good or better than all the other overhangs. Now that we know what a good temperature for this filament is on this printer, we're going to want to update the profile we made. So what you need to do is go back to prepare and click the manage button and we're coming to temperature. And all I'm going to do is change that to 225. That's all there is to it. I'll change all these to 225. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave my fine alone. I'm going to leave that at 210. Nah, I'm going 225 on that. That's what I've done in the past. My build plate temperature, I might increase the temperature on that later to 50. Uh, you saw in the time lapse where it knocked the, the tower over right at the end. I did get my results anyways, but first I'm going to clean the bed. and We'll see how we do. <laughs> but for now, I'm keeping it at 45 degrees. So we're going to hit save. And that's all there is to it. We have a profile with the built-in temperature. Anytime we want to print a model with this material, all we have to do is come over and make sure that we select our printed solid. Now, if I would go ahead and I buy a Creality PLA and I want to use that, I would just select theirs. But right now I'm dialing in my printed solid, so we'll stick with it. And that's all there is to it.
We're off to a good start at dialing in this material for my Ender 3 V3 SE. Made a profile, we ran the temperature test, we queued the results, and we updated our new profile to that temperature every time I use this particular material on this printer. Now, you'll want to do this for each filament brand and type that you use to get the best results. I hope you found the information helpful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know down in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content. I'll be building upon this profile in Creality Print. Live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.